I hope you can understand me well. My name is uh, Ralf Klimke. I'm responsible for sales and marketing at Argosense, and I will guide you through the webinar today. With me, I have my colleague uh, from our consulting team, Abdul Gulam, um, who will later on go uh, show you the product uh, um, with a live demonstration uh, that we have planned here. So again, thank you for your participation, and uh, let's first have a look uh, on the agenda what we what we have planned for you today. Uh, so first, a small introduction to our company. Um, then we will go into an overview about Argus and Symphony, Argus and Symphony One, our integration platform, and this will be followed up by the live demonstration um, by Abdul. And after that, we'll have a Q&A session, question and answers, uh, so that everybody here in the panel can raise this question and we hopefully can answer them all. So if you have any question, you can already put them in um, using the uh, Q&A or Fragen und Antworten in German um, um, panel, and we will collectively answer them at the end <coughs> of the webinar. So let's go directly into the introduction. So Argosense um, was founded in 2009, and we since then we we are helping companies in connecting different um, applications, mainly uh, development tools in software and system development, to network data and improve, especially the overview across the entire development process. So traceability is here the buzzword uh, that we are trying to aim for our customers so that everybody involved in the complete development process can cooperate as best as possible here. Um, here, a um, few of our customers. Um, I had planned one slide before that, just showing you a little bit, um, let's say the, the historic um, flow of Argosense. So as I said, we have been established 2009 well, with our first product, Argosense Symphony, which we still are uh, developing and maintaining. Um, then we have uh, followed up that with a second product called Argosense Fidelia for, so it's kind of a um, agile um, ALM system with requirements management. Then we have um, brought out the second generation of Argosense Symphony called Argosense Symphony 1, which we will concentrate on today. And uh, a further milestone in that pro uh, product is uh, the topic of real-time synchronization. This is something we will also have a look at um, today. <clears throat> For that slide, if there is the need for any one of you to talk to one of our existing customers uh, to get a first-hand information about Argosense and our products, just let us know, send us an email or call us, uh, get in touch um, with uh, the channels we are offering, and uh, we'll try to establish uh, co direct contact here. Usually our customers are more than happy to, um, to answer your questions. So, Argus and Symphony, Argus and Symphony 1, what is it all about? It's more or less simply management and automation of your data flows and integration of development tools and ALM platforms. So, what you see here is, um, say, the, um, the, the more general um, topics uh, which you usually have in your development cycle, um, for example, starting with requirements management, going on to test management, change management, defect management, and after delivery of your pro uh, projects, maybe IT service management and also incident management. That's all what is behind this complete ALM application lifecycle management. And usually many of our customers, especially our customers, they have different tools behind these different domains, but there is, um, because of, um, of the necessity of traceability, the requirement to connect these tools and get data from, uh, from the other tools into other tools here. So this is what Argosense Symphony is, um, is helping our customers. And we have, <coughs> more or less 
two main use cases for the system. One is the use case development tool integration. That means that we are integrating all your different internal development tools from the different vendors like IBM, um, PTC, Polarian, Siemens Polarian, um, Microfocus, whatever. So this is really to connect your best of breed um, tool chain into, into a yeah, highly integrated end-to-end -end, uh, system where you have the complete traceability and value stream management for your overall system. The second aspect, the second use case is a little bit more special. So we have a lot of customers uh, in the automotive industry and here we have a very, very um, strong relationship between suppliers and uh, car manufacturers and they very often need to exchange um, mainly defect management data but not also, it's also other um, development data they have to exchange between their systems. Of course, uh, because of security and firewalls and everything, the systems are quite closed, but um, the car manufacturers, they have so-called supplier um, portals where they open their systems, usually with a facade before that. Um, uh, so every supplier connected to such a system then has access to um, the data and they will arrange how the data will be transported in both directions and for that use case we have specialized adapters and uh, connectors for these um, different oem supplier portals like for example bmw taesi or Daimler Stark or Volkswagen KPM so that you seamlessly can import uh, the stuff you get from your customer into your system. You do not have to uh, work with a second system so your developers can really concentrate on using the systems they are used to um, and also get back the stuff to your customers uh, in, a, in a proper way so that no data gets lost and uh, everything is um, transport it to your customers right in time. So this is what the system is doing here for you. So currently we have about 35 plus integrations. Uh, so where you, uh, which we offer um, um, commercial adapters for, which you can instantly use. So with uh, the Symphony platform, um, so that you really can establish here your best of breed integration suite. And from parts of that, we will show you today, of course, not everything in the platform, but we have picked uh, some of the main features. Um, I think Abdul will prepare um, or establish a new, a new um, synchronization between two different development tools, and you will see how easy that it is. It, that is without any any coding, just in minutes. Uh, connect both systems and let the data flow um, in both directions, ideally. So what um, we are usually providing here is we have so-called synchronization rules, which are predefined um, already for you. And uh, that will include, for example, the synchronization of attachments, of comments, um, also will have a kind of a conflict resolution and a little bit more Abdul will show you. Then of course we can map uh, the attributes and enumeration values uh, between uh, the tools you are synchronizing data. Of course, the description in the, your source tool maybe does not, it's not maybe called description in the target tool, maybe the attribute has another name, so you can map them and uh, we will also manage that in the system, you will see. And then, and that's the main, let's say topic for today, uh, we have different synchronization approaches. So one we just talked about is a real-time sync that we are offering. We also have a scheduled sync, or you can also sync um, um, data based on a manual trigger by a user, for example. So this is uh, what Abdul will explain a little bit more in detail um, during his uh, demonstration. What you you also see here in the background a little bit, uh, we will show you the dashboard and how the live status and the statistics are showing up in, in Argus and Symphony. 
And of course, if you have a little bit more complex integration scenarios, um, you can also, with a small portion of coding, you can extend um, our system so that it's a little bit more maybe customized towards your needs. I think Abdul will also lose some words about that, but this is not planned to be shown for today, so we will make probably um, a separate webinar for that topic. But usually I would say 80% of our customers, they really can use the system Arbus and Symphony 1 without any complex um, um, scenarios, without any extensions here. So then, Abdul, let's see what you have, what you have to show. Yeah, thank you, Ralph, and a good day to everyone who's listening in. Now, my goal is to showcase how Symphony 1 looks like, how it works, and like Ralph mentioned, how easy it is to, to set up a synchronization between two tools in Symphony with uh, no coding at all. Um, and we'll also then focus today on the real time synchronization aspect of Symphony. So I'll start my screen sharing right now. Let's see, screen, and you should be able to see my screen now. Yes, perfect. So this is the, yeah, perfect. So this is the Symphony 1 uh, application. Um, the, the UI itself is pretty minimalistic. Um, we have the syncs where we can configure new synchronization between the tools. We have, of course, the dashboard that Ralph was talking about, where it shows uh, how long uh, the items take to sync and um, how many items are being synced and so on. Uh, I have prepared a synchronization here for showcasing the real time synchronization. We will keep it as it is. And then I will now walk you through how we can create um, a new synchronization in Symphony. Uh, to synchronize between, let's say, Codebeamer and Azure. So all I have to do is click on the new button on the Syncs window and then pops um, a list of parameters that I would have to fill in. I select the merge process and then let's say here, yeah, this is, uh, uh, give, let's give this a synchronization a name. So demo CB to Azure, we can call it. So the source tool, we would have to choose from uh, what is our source tool and what is our target tool. So in this case, our source tool is going to be Codebeamer, target tool is going to be Azure. And if you want the uh, Azure items, new Azure items to be created in Codebeamer, you can uh, do that by selecting a create target. So right now, this is a, without this check mark, it is a partial bidirectional process. So new items in Codebeamer will be created in Azure and whatever changes that are there in Azure will be written back into Codebeamer. If you also want the process to pick up new items from Azure and also create them in Codebeamer, then you have the possibility to enable this flag and make the process to do this. The other uh, flags that you have in the synchronization are whether you want to transfer the attachments or not and whether you want to transfer the comments or not. So like Ralph said, there is uh, no coding at all required. Without any coding out of the box, we are able to then synchronize bidirectionally between two tools, including the attachments and including the comments. So submit. This creates a new synchronization. And then there are a couple of icons that takes us through uh, the com uh, to the co through the configuration of the synchronization. The very first one is the source configuration. So this is uh, our Codebeamer tool. So we selected our source to be Codebeamer. So this is the connection parameters that we have to specify for connecting to Codebeamer. I will just enter the details here and. As soon as you see, it's pretty much uh, the same for almost all of the adapters. You just have to give the URL where the application is running or where we can reach the API, let's say, the user and the password. And as soon as you hit the test connection, it's going to validate whether your, your parameters are correct. 
and in the background symphony is going to go and load all the projects that are available on this system so right now there's only one project there is a template project that i have in my code Pima. and as soon as i select the project as a next step it goes and looks for all the tracker items that are there and it populates all the tracker items of code Pima. let's say i want to transfer the bugs tracker so that allows me to transfer all the bugs that belong to this software scrum template project to Azure. There is another level of uh, uh, filtering that we can do. So in code Beamer, we could create a, a, a filter. So uh, for example, if you uh, have a look at code Beamer here, uh, we can uh, create, a, um, so let's go into the trackers and let's go into the bugs. And here, for example, you can see I've created a, a, a filter uh, where item ID equals 1129. And I have saved uh, this, this filter uh, as a public filter now called symphony underscore sync. Now what symphony is also capable of doing is as soon as you select the project and the tracker, and if you select the use custom query, then Symfony is going to load all the custom queries that you have saved against this tracker. So we only then transfer the items that are matching this query. So for example, here, like I showed, we have a Symfony underscore sync filter in CodeBeamer, and the same uh, is then showing up in the Dropbox here, and then you can select it. So that is the source configuration. So source being code be more for, for us at the moment. Now let's the, to the target, which is now going to be Azure. So for Azure, I will again take the URL, the password. And it's pretty much the same. Um, some tools, uh, instead of using an username and password, some tools use tokens. So depending on whether a username and password is use, used or a PAT is used, you might see a, a parameter less than. Uh, the same concept, once we give the URL and the credentials, we test the connection and it goes and loads all the projects. That is now there is one project called demo one, and then it loads what item types that are available for us. Let's say we want to create an item type issue. So I can type issue and then submit. So what we have now done is we have created a synchronization, connected it to the source, which is our code Beamer side, connected the synchronization to the target, which is our Azure side. The next step is we can go and do the mapping. So to do the mapping, we click on the mapping icon. And again, it's pretty much the same. You click on new and then pops a window where you can then enter the details of the mapping. Now the details of the mapping is starts with the direction. So in which direction you want to map each field. So the, the mapping direction is now um, uh, so flexible that you can do it by field. You can decide that, for example, the summary field you want to synchronize both ways. So changes in code Beamer should go to Azure and changes in Azure should come to code Beamer. So then you select simply both. And in the source you type summary and you will see that in the target, uh, the system automatically tries to load uh, the relevant fields that we can write summary into in Azure so that you don't have to go hunting for it. So this is the title. Now, since we are doing a, a bi-directional synchronization for the summary and the title field, there's a possibility that a conflict arises. So someone changes the value in code Beamer and someone changes the value in Azure also. Now, given that might be the case, so what do we do in this conflict? So we have three options uh, that Symphony can take. Uh, one is we can say the source wins, which means whatever change uh, was done in CodeBeamer will simply override the changes in Azure. Or you can say target wins. So every time what is changed in the title will always override what is then changed in CodeBeamer summary. Or you can end with an error. 
So if you end with an error, then that item is not synchronized. You can later on go into uh, the error messages, see what was the conflict, and then uh, manually fix it. So for the sake of the demo, I'll just select source wins and then submit. The same I can do also for the description field. So let's select description here and description here, source wins and submit. Now let's take a look at an enumeration field, for example, priority. And if I select priority on Kodima side, there is also a priority on the Azul side. That's nice. I select it. And then again, here I can say the source is going to win. Uh, now, since these are enumeration values, I can also specify the default values for them in case for some of the fields, um, the values are not filled in. So in CodeBima, you might see that the priority is, uh, is mandatory, but in Azure, maybe the priority is not mandatory anymore. So there can be cases where the priority is not filled. So in cases like that, you can also set a default value. So, and you can see here, the valid values for CodeBima are automatically loaded. And same for the target side, this is then all the valid values in Azure. In Azure, we just call them one, two, three, four. So let's say the lowest goes to one and then submit. Now, this is only the selection of the default value. Now, we saw in the value list there was a difference in what CodeBima has and what Azure has. Now, to map these values, we would simply have to double click the attribute and it will go into the priority, priority attribute mapping and it will go into the value mapping window. So here you can see our defaults are already displayed. So the default for CodeBeam is going to be lowest and for Azure it's going to be one. And here you can create your remaining uh, mappings. So again, let's say lowest goes to one. Low also goes to maybe one. Then normal goes to two. High goes to three. Highest goes to four. And if it is unset, there's also a value called unset, but we don't have a corresponding value here. Let's say we just put it to one. So something like this. So this allows you to also map the enumeration fields uh, without having to go hunt for what are the valid values, where do I look them up? So all that information is automatically loaded by Symfony 1 for you. So that's the mapping table. Then uh, the next step of the um, synchronization configuration is the extension piece. So this is what Ralph was telling about where if you want some customizations to be done for the sync process, you can write up a short extension and deploy it in the Symfony application and that extension is going to show as a drop down box here. And then you can select which extension you want to run as part of the synchronization. And in the extension, you have the possibilities of manipulating then the, the sync itself with additional logics and checks and whatnot. Then the last icon in the configuration steps is the scheduling uh, icon. And in the scheduling icon, it's pretty straightforward. Either you activate the schedule or deactivate it with this button. And then there are options of uh, running the synchronization at, uh, at, at an exact time or in a range between certain time or in steps. So for example, every 15 minutes, or you can say uh, in steps of every one hour. And then finally, you can choose in which days of the week your process should run. So let's say it's only Monday to Friday. So you can select a configuration like this. So this allows you to configure your process depending on the way you would like. <clears throat> That's the uh, scheduling itself. 
And once we have the scheduling set up, uh, the process that is that is the that is one way of uh, running the process. So the scheduler is going to fire at uh, the interval or the specified time configuration and the synchronization is going to run at that point. So that is one way of running the sync. The other one is of course manually running it from the window here. So you can also then click on the play button. This triggers a full synchronization. So it, it ignores all the failure data and it does a complete synchronization from the source to the target. So this is like um, once uh, once in the weekend or something like that and uh, you can do this full synchronization or if there were too many errors piling up and you wanted to clear all those errors and that's this is also a nice way to do that. What we are going to concentrate on today is a trigger based synchronization. So that is the configuration I have set up for you here, CB to Azure. You can see the schedule is inactive and I'm also not going to run it manually. So rather than that, what we are going to do is, let's uh, have on the one side, uh, this is the Azure side. Let me take CodeBeamer. Let me put CodeBeamer to one side of the window and let's put Azure on the other side of the window. So what I've done before this demo is I've already synchronized this item, uh, making some changes to Azure, making some changes. What I wanted to show you today is the real-time synchronization that Symfony has. So to demonstrate that, I will go ahead in CodeBeamer and I will start editing this ticket. Making some changes for the demo. Just some description. Have a nice day. So, as soon as I hit save, the um, item is saved in CodeBeamer. And as you can see, I'm not sure if you noticed on the right hand side, immediately uh, the ticket changed from making some changes to making some changes for the demo where <laughs> I have done a typo. And then uh, the description has also updated to just some description, have a nice day. So for people who might have missed it, I'll do it again. Uh, let's go edit and then maybe we'll fix the typo here. So this is demo. And then if you watch what happens in Azure, this, this should then be fixed automatically. So I click on the save. Save. And then as soon as the save is done, you can see within uh, <laughs> a blink of an eye, uh, the uh, the changes in uh, Azure happen. So this is this is the real time synchronization of Symphony, and this is what we wanted to uh, focus on and showcase to you. So what happens in the background to all this for people who might be interested is in CodeBeamer, we have the concept of what uh, what is called as listeners. So in CodeBeamer, we can create uh, or write up uh, a custom listener and you can uh, make that listener to react to certain events uh, happening in CodeBeamer. So I have created a listener here that then looks for uh, an event whenever there is a tracker item being created and an event whenever there is a tracker item being updated. In both cases, we are simply triggering the job in Symfony via this endpoint. So in Symfony, we have an endpoint where we can then specifically tell what is the synchronization that we want to run and with what source ID or with what could be my ID do we want to run this synchronization with. So this will have to be deployed in the uh, server, in the CodeBeamer server itself. So there is a specific location that your CodeBeam admins would be able to help you with this. Um, where you can deploy this uh, listener. And once this listener is up and active, you can also make these configurable. So for example, in my listener, I have hard coded the project and the tracker item ID, but you can also make these into configurable files, uh, into config files, push them into config files. 
And depending on which project you want to enable this listener for, you can control it from the config file. And whenever a user either creates a new item or updates an existing item, then that listener is going to immediately call Symfony. And that is what you see um, as, a, as a result here. So there is no waiting, there is no schedule, uh, there is no manual uh, intervention. So the listener all, all, all keeps listening and picks up the event and immediately pushes the job to Symfony. And within a blink of an eye, Symfony transfers the data over to, to the target tool. So that pretty much sums up what we wanted to show you today in regards to the real-time synchronization capabilities of Symfony. Hope it was interesting for you. Like Ralph said, if you have any questions, drop them and we will try to answer them. Thank you. Thank you, Abdul. Uh, very impressive. Uh, great, great stuff here um, that, that we have seen. I'm really impressed how, how fast this is. Um, so um, let's just come back to my to my slides. So um, yeah, what we have what we have seen right now. Just a little recap um, on here is so of course the point and click configuration uh, for regular things, also for real time things. That is pretty much the same um, from from the Symphony perspective. Um, we have seen um, that same more or less predefined synchronization logic we are offering here. And um, the sync options you have seen scheduled and for the real time sync, uh, which, which Abdul showed, of course, uh, not every tool is supporting that, but most of the tools we are dealing with, for example, correct me if I'm wrong, Abdul, um, ETC, uh, RVNS, formerly called Integrity, or Jira or CodeBeamer, we have seen. I think Azure also. So all um, tools which uh, have kind of um, an event trigger mechanism, um, which then we can we can use our, our listeners to. Um, that will yeah. support this kind of technology. For the listeners themselves, you have seen it's just a few lines of code. Um, this is um, something we either have templates for or can provide you with or can can guide you on, on how to do that or very often our customers they 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 have familiar administrators which already have built event triggers for something else so uh, usually there is some knowledge knowledge about that so that's no rocket science it's very easy um, and from the usage usage perspective um, i have uh, showed in previous slides that we have two main use cases for Symfony. One is the tool-to-tool -tool integration internal. So that's where this kind of uh, synchronization option really is uh, made for, um, for the customers who are exchanging data between um, themselves and their customers like OEMs. Um, that, this is more, um, let's say, an approach where we would recommend to go with the schedules because there we have more an asynchronous synchronization. Uh, so usually the customers, they expect updates in certain intervals. Uh, of course, it could be possible in, in some aspects. For example, if you are connecting with the Jira system, your customers providing you an access to, then maybe we can also use, um, we can also use the listener part and the real-time sync for that as well. But um, with that typical um, OEM supplier portals, that approach probably would not would not work. And it's also not really necessary to have that. So usually there um, it's really it's arranged and agreed uh, in which intervals data will be updated back and forth. So um, but if you have any more questions with regards to that, just let us know. Um, I see also, the queue for questions is uh, filling a little bit, um, but also after the meeting, um, you will have, of course, the option to ask us. If you are already a customer, ask us via the support portal or go to your sales um, contact. If you're not customer, um, I will show you the contact options we have uh, in a few in a few minutes. Um, what we have not directly talked about here is uh, Symphony One is. Um, yeah, offers kind of a elastic transaction system. That means um, 
uh, the system always adapts itself uh, with this uh, in terms of system load to um, to the resources it can get from you. So if you feel the system is maybe slowing down or you you really have a very large number of items to synchronize and you see in your dashboard that um, maybe they are not um, they are not worked on in time. You can just increase your system uh, resources uh, either by software settings or maybe you have to add some hardware and then we symphony is using what it can get and uh, make everything as fast as possible of course we also are um, performing and transporting data in parallel so it's not only um, item per item after one after each other so we can also have can be called a parallel parallelism, uh, which is automatically um, um, enabled in the system. So you can really, really work on a huge uh, number of data at the same time here with that system. We have seen the dashboard um, and of course our license model. And this is also a question uh, for you. Um, coming back to us, what, what kind of uh, what kind of systems do you want to integrate? Just ask us. Our license model is very simplistic. Uh, it's just based on, um, say, the number of Symfony servers you need and the tools you want to connect. So, so we have uh, server-based as a base, and then for each adapter, there's a there's a separate uh, licensing necessary, but that's all. We do not count for any number of users you have in your system or your customer has in your systems, number of projects or how many endpoints. So um, in our case, if you have multiple instances of uh, CodeBeamer or Azure, you can connect them with the same license. So there's also no extra charge for that. So very easy. Um, um, so as I said, just ask us for your, your um, direct contact for pricing, um, then you can you get the answers on that, what you need. <clears throat> yeah, so that's more or less from what we wanted to show you. So now let's get directly to your questions. Abdul, I think you also should see um, the questions here. So what I will do, I will read them and uh, either myself or Abdul, um, will answer them. So one, I'm just making it public. First question, is the real-time synchronization possible also for Symphony Classic? So Symphony Classic is a generation one uh, product which um, needs a little bit more customization. About uh, For that we have not talked about, but we have some existing customers today in the line and this question obviously comes from a, an existing customer. Um, Abdul, um, I think we have some means of um, having this kind of real-time synchronization also in Symfony Classic, but I think the system is not really, um, let's say, um, designed for it. Maybe you can yep. recommend them that. So in Symfony Classic, of course, we can trigger a real-time synchronization, but the problem is uh, in the end, uh, the, we have to make sure that uh, the Java process that we design or that we implement um, should be uh, able to then uh, receive only one item. So it, usually the Java process is written in such a way we query for a list of items and then each item is processed in the execution. Uh, so the Java process has to be adopted a little bit, uh, adapted a little bit to, to then handle this situation. The second thing uh, that that would not be uh, very ideal in Classic, like you said, Ralph, is we have these slot mechanisms in Classic where you uh, can only run four jobs at a time. And even though uh, you run the process uh, for that one item, that slot is blocked. And if there are, let's say, five or six items that have been modified at the given point in time, then you will see that they are not as real time as transfer as expected there is a waiting but whereas in symphony one uh, as ralph pointed out there is this parallelism concept where symphony depending on the hardware capability can in parallel process uh, for example by default 32 items uh, at the same time so uh, that is that that enables uh, a real real time synchronization let's say 
Uh, yeah. to, to make to make a long story short, Abdul, uh, the good news is, um, as you are obviously already a customer of uh, of, of ours, you can use uh, and and you already have installed Symphony One. So if you install uh, Symphony Classic, and you are, I think, at the latest on version three dot three or so, um, then you also have installed Symphony uh, Symphony One as well. So uh, and you can use both in parallel on your server. So um, just um, go into the Symphony One interface, create and create your synchronization there, and then you can use, for example, you can you can also have a split circuit. All the um, all the real time synchronizations I'm I'm firing up with Symphony One, and then you can have them from there. So that's very easy. Um, I hope that answers your question. If not, uh, I would really encourage you to uh, get in touch with us uh, using the support channel and then maybe we can have a little bit more discussion on that, maybe make a separate call for that or so. So next question is coming from Ioannis. Um, is the history of values for each item or artifact stored as well in the target system or the target system contains only the latest information from the source? So usually, um, if for each change in the system, the, the system itself is creating the history, of course, uh, using a synchronization tool like ours will also create a history in your target system. Um, we are doing nothing else than a regular user would do if he updates information uh, in, let's call it target system, here in our case, Azure. Uh, we are using the API and the API is uh, the public and uh, let's say the official way to go into the system and we do not just override the data. Of course, the latest data will be shown up, but if you go into the history tab of your system, then you will see the history um, in that system um, as well over time <clears throat> for each synchronization runs. So, um, also very good question. Is there a, a list of tools um, which support that uh, event triggered synchronization? Um, currently, I think we do not have um, uh, generated that list, um, but maybe we can turn that question around. Uh, just send us the tools you want to enable that um, and we can tell you if it's possible. But um, at least the ones I mentioned, uh, PDC Integrity or RVNS, Jira, CodeBeam, Azure, uh, they offer that. I'm not sure if you have any other tools. I think IBM EVS also, or EWS should also offer the event, event trigger mechanism. Um, but as I said, um, best is you send us in the list of tools and we will check it for you. But anyway, we will generate a list of uh, supported tools. That's uh, that's something we have to do anyway. Um, okay, there is one question. Maybe Abdul, you has to you have to take that one. It looks also like uh, coming from a customer. Fabiola is asking: Can the listener solution be implemented in already existing classic Symphony process in order to track real time events? I think that part you already answered. If not, do you plan to implement such solution in classic version of your tools? I think you already answered it because it's depending on the Java process. So you probably yeah. would have to create a new Java process implementation in order to make um, make use of that um, um, event trigger mechanism. Each process yeah. you are developing in Symfony or you have in Symfony has an API to the outside world, and with that trigger, we are doing nothing else than, um, in 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 the case, uh, code beam or change has been stored, as we have seen in Abdul's example. Then that event will be catched by by code beamer, and code and that event we can use for firing then information into the API of the process, and uh, then the process will start. I think that's more or less what we are doing there. So um, yeah, you yeah, can exactly. do it already, so, but you have to uh, you have to create a separate process for yeah. that. 
Yeah, exactly. So the, the, the out of the box process, like Ralph said, is already capable of doing this. So you can uh, run that process uh, as a scheduled process, as a user triggered process, or also an event triggered process. And this is all already implemented in the out of the box process for you. But if you want to do it in classic, you can still do it. But either like Ralph mentioned, you create a new Java process or you have to adapt your existing Java process to then work in uh, in, in all ways or like what the uh, out of the box process does. Uh, that it will be a little bit of an overhead for you in the classic world. And like I said, it, in the classic world, you will not see a very real time synchronization that you saw in Symfony 1. The, in Symfony 1, it will happen in a blink of an eye because of the parallelism concept. In Symfony Classic, it will be a, a, a pseudo real time uh, synchronization. The event will be recognized real time, but the items will be processed uh, one after the other, so not in parallel. So you wouldn't see the uh, uh, changes immediately on the other side. No. But again, the hint from my side, uh, use Symfony 1 for that. You already have it. And uh, I think. Uh, it, it, I think it makes sense um, because it's much more simplistic to set up um, um, in order to create a new process and, and stuff and, and stuff like that. Um, next question again from Lucas uh, is KPM, GSB, and Stark. So these for for all the others, these are uh, two of these OEM supplier portals. Do they support the event triggered mechanism? Um, I would say these two, of course, not because the event the listener always has to be implemented on the tool side. So you would not get um, real time updates from Daimler or from Volkswagen into your direction, but in the other direction. Uh, I think um, that should be possible. So, for example, if you're using a code beamer uh, on your side and you want to uh, synchronized data to Daimler Stark. Um, why should it not be possible to use a real time synchronization? But I'm not 100% yeah. sure Abdul has to answer that. Yeah, yeah, you're right, Ralph. So these listeners have to be implemented on the the source tools, and in this case, I'm um, uh, for way or for Volkswagen or Daimler is not going to allow you to do that, because we also we have to uh, put some jar files into that running system. And uh, I'm not sure if they would be happy to <laughs> allow us to do that. And the second thing is usually uh, for the KPM systems and the Stark system, the other way around, like Ralph said, would be possible. So there's nothing stopping you from doing it until uh, maybe um, uh, you have a contract with the, with the OEM that says, please synchronize only in these intervals. So some customers do have such contracts where they say, OK, we synchronize the tickets only once a day or twice a day or something like that. If you don't have such a contract, then you can then of course do the real time synchronization in the other way around. So from your tool to KPM, from your tool to Stark, for example. Yeah. Yes, as as Abdul said, um, ma mainly or uh, most most OEMs, they, I think they offer contracts for schedules um, synchronization because also they want to, let's say, <coughs> uh, control and monitor the load they have on their side, on their systems. Um, and if you have an event triggered uh, mechanism, of course, that could maybe if you have 2000 developers and uh, all of them make within a minute all they are saving data. Um, of course, that's hypothetical, but then you would have uh, 2000 uh, events at a time. And I think uh, this is not manageable for for your OEM, for your customer, because he cannot predict what is happening. But with the schedule mechanism, he exactly can predict what is what will happen uh, and, and, and can predict the load on his system. So I'm not very sh pretty sure if they are happy with that, but you have to check with, uh, with them before, of course. Um, another question again from Fabiola. So she's asking if we are organizing a live demo or a webinar for these extensions. Um, as I said, um, this is something we we are thinking about, but that will that will not be kind of a, a training. That will be more giving you an overview um, how it's working, what can be done uh, on a theoretical basis, of course, maybe with one or two examples. We have not planned it so far, uh, so I think we will do that after the summer vacation period. Um, but in the meantime, if you have the necessity uh, to 
get more deeper into that topic, uh, extension to Symphony One, just um, just uh, ask your your salesperson or raise a question via support portal uh, that we can arrange um, a coaching session for you with that. So that should not be a big deal. OK, so another one. OK, Abdul, that goes definitely to you. Maybe I do not understand it. Jan is asking, do you have any data for the expected worst case system load? Um, mm, I'm guessing here, if, uh, if my understanding is right, uh, on the symphony maybe, um, there are two aspects to it. Uh, in Symphony, there is a configuration that allows us to control how many items can be synchronized in parallel. And by default, Symphony starts off with 32 items. So 32 tasks can be in, executed in parallel by Symphony. So that is the maximum load that Symphony starts off with. If you have a bigger machine with more memory, more CPU, more RAM, uh, then we can then have a one-to-one -one discussion and see how we can increase these parallelism. Uh, that is one aspect of the load. The second aspect is now, since Symphony is going to uh, uh, transfer these 32 items uh, in parallel, so the target tool and the source tool should also be able to take this load. So you can check with your respective tool admins uh, to to see how much uh, uh, API calls that the tool supports in a given second. So, for example, in Azure and CodeBeamer, uh, the the administrator can throttle the request. So, within uh, a minute, if there are uh, um, uh, more than a thousand requests coming, then they they slow down the API. So, these kind of configurations are very specific to your uh, to your tool setup. So, you can always uh, ask uh, how the admins uh, how it is configured for you. And Symphony, that's why Symphony starts off with a very low number, 32 tasks in parallel. And most of the tools in the market, if you hit the REST API with 32 calls at the same time, they should they should not have a problem with it. But uh, if you want to increase that then it also depends on the tools capability on and on the symphony service configuration hopefully <laughs> i covered all the aspects uh, yeah yes and if not uh Janis, i would encourage you also to get in touch with us and maybe we can discuss all your questions and requirements um, um in, a, in a separate in a separate call or meeting whatever um would be would be great okay so very good um Really had fun with uh, with that webinar. A lot of questions, really great. Um, so now, as there is nothing new coming in, so I would go to the to the closing session. Um, uh, sorry for that. Um, yes. Yeah, so, if there is um, any need to um, to get in to get in touch with us, I think we already discovered that there is some um just see we do not have the slide here so um just go on uh, on our website so we have um i think a lot of options for a contact form so where you can uh, reach us directly um, i think on every web page we have we have our contact form or you can send us an email to mail at 